Hey tea heads, this is Don from Mayleaf. In this video, visiting a Beijing tea market. In this video, we're going to stroll around Maliandao Tea Market in Beijing to see what we can find. This video is going to go under the Tea Trips playlist. If at any point in time you enjoy this video, then please give the video the thumbs up. The more thumbs in the air, the more tea videos are going to come your way. And if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel yet, then go click that button. I am in Beijing. I am here for one day and one day only. I arrived in yesterday from London and I'm leaving tomorrow. Yes, I know that is insane. Flying all the way across the world for one day. But I have a very important meeting that I need to attend to and it can only be done face to face. But I thought, since I'm here, it's a great opportunity for us to go and visit a tea market, specifically Maliandao Tea Market in Beijing, which is the largest tea market in northern China. My meeting is not until 5 p.m. It is now 8.30 a.m. So we have a few hours. Let's go and visit the tea market. And because it's such a large tea market, I want to try to give you some tips on how you can source good tea there. Now at Mayleaf, we don't visit these tea markets. In fact, I've only been to Maliandao once in my life. Uh, we buy our teas from the mountains or from the villages around the mountains. However, I'm very conscious of the fact that you tea heads out there visiting China will probably want to visit these tea markets. So let's see if I can give you some little shortcut tips to find the best tea. It's about 45 minutes to an hour away, so we need to leave soon. However, before then, I just want to say a big thank you to each and every one of you who voted for the Time Out Love London Awards. I woke up at 5 a.m. this morning, um, I'm still on London time, and uh, checked online, and I discovered, to my surprise, that we have won Best Shop in Camden Town at the Time Out Love London Awards, which is a major, major surprise to me. Um, I know that I asked everyone to vote and um, we beat Camden Town Market, which is a huge tourist attraction in London, to the first position. And officially, we are the best shop in Camden. And I know that that is thanks to each and every one of you who voted, all our clients, everybody on Facebook, everybody on YouTube out there who had voted for us. I really, really want to say a heartfelt thanks to you. I'm very humbled by this um, and it only motivates us to go even further to represent true tea culture. But thank you, thank you, thank you. Honestly, I really, really mean that. It means a lot to us um, and it was a big surprise and a great way to start the day. So, we're going to head off, take the subway. We're going to head down to, down to Maliandao Tea Market. It's just me. I'm by myself, so I'm going to be holding the camera. It may not be the best footage you've ever seen, but hopefully we'll get some uh, interesting experiences in Maliandao. So, if you're ready, let's go. Okay, so we have to take a subway down. It's very easy. You just click the English here. This is where I am. This is where I want to go. Li, Liu Li Chao, Liu Li Chao East. So if I click on line nine, like that. Line nine, click on Liu Li Chao East. It tells me how much I need to pay. Five yuan, which is about 50p, which is about 70 cents. And we get a ticket and we're on our way. guys, so we've just come out of Yu Li Chao East subway station and I'm walking towards Maliandao Market. I have no idea where I'm going actually, so I'm kind of following my nose and asking directions as I go, but I think I'm heading in the right direction. Generally, there are three types of shops in these tea markets. The first type, you'll notice, sells a whole range of tea. Lots of different teas from different uh, places, different types of tea. I would avoid those because those are basically buying tea from lots of different farmers or lots of different wholesalers and um, they don't specialize in anything and therefore they probably don't have the best of any particular type of tea. The second type of tea sells generally one type of tea and it's all one brand and they generally are um, associated with a single farm. Those are good um, because those ones um, are, have direct links back to the plantations, to the farms 
and they will um, usually have pretty good tea. The third type um, is again having one type of tea but from various different brands and what that usually is is an enthusiast, somebody who really loves and knows one type of tea. Again, those are good teas, uh, tea shops to go and visit. So when you're going, the first thing to look for is look for a tea shop that specializes in really one type of tea. That's really important, or at least, you know, a very few amounts of teas. Then you actually look at the tea sellers themselves. And um, there are, in my opinion, a few different types of tea sellers. There's type one, let's call it. Type one is the very enthusiastic tea seller that is clearly trying to get you into their tea shop in order to, uh, for you to sample their teas and hopefully sell some to you. I just generally instinctively try to avoid those places. Um, they usually are quite hard sellers. Um, they'll try to um, sell you tea and try to sell you lots of it. So if you, even if you do like the tea, they'll try and convince you to buy 500 grams a kilo of tea, which may be not something that you want to do. Uh, probably you won't. You probably want to buy lots of different types of tea in smaller amounts. So I would avoid type one sellers. Then there are type two sellers where you kind of walk past and you see that they're basically all really bored, um, just kind of yawning and packing tea. Um, usually these are employees that are employed um, and don't really have any invested interest in the tea business, uh, vested interest in what they're doing. Um, and they're kind of just getting on with their day-to-day -day work, earning a living as you were. Um, so these I would avoid again because, you know, you're probably not going to get the best information out of them and, um, and they just generally are not going to be that happy to converse or try to converse with you if you don't speak Chinese. And then you've got the third type of seller. And the third type of seller, call it type three, this type of seller um, you can spot because they kind of have an air of confidence, an air of charisma about them, but it's quiet. They're not trying to get you into their store. They're not trying to lure you in. Instead, they're quite happily sitting there, getting on with their business. Um, and there's just a feeling that you get with this confidence of a tea seller that knows their stuff and knows their stuff is good. Um, and so we're gonna be trying to find type three sellers. So that's the quick hack. So try and find shops that specialize in one or two types of tea and look for those type three sellers. Right, I have a road to cross. I don't want to get killed. So I'll switch off now and hopefully I'll see you again at the market. Okay, we've arrived at Malian Dao. Just at this, the beginning, this is the entrance uh, archway here, you can see. So we've just arrived um, and as I expected, it's a long strip of lots and lots of shops. Um, all with lots of amazing looking tea in there so it can kind of get very tempting. Now, usually with these tea markets, these city tea markets, they have a stretch of shops and then a couple, one or two big shopping centers with lots of floors of tea. I have found in my experience, and this is a real generalization, so it's, it, it may not be true for Mali and Dao, but I've found in my experience that the shops on the strip tend to be the shops that specialize um, that do not specialize, I should say, that have lots of different types of tea. Whereas in the uh, shopping centers, you're more likely to find the uh, shops that are linked with tea farms or are specialists in certain areas. I'm not sure if it's gonna be the case for Mali and Dao, but we're gonna go take a look. So let's go take a peek. Yeah, I'm just looking around. What type of tea do you have? Do you specialize in any tea? Yeah, jasmine tea. Jasmine tea? Green tea, oolong tea, red tea. This okay. is all the shop. So that was an example of somebody who claims to have a tea farm, but when you ask where the tea farm is, they say Anhui, uh, Zhejiang, Fujian. So apparently they've got tea farms all over China, which is um, not quite right um, and again she sold lots of different types of tea I would avoid that so you've got to be very very um, polite but at the same time be uh, prepared to say no to people otherwise you will waste your time um, drinking lots of tea out of politeness and not because you actually uh, want to buy any but I'll just give you a little glimpse of some of these tea shops hopefully you can still hear me even though I'm behind the camera so you can see you could spend an entire day just on the first couple of hundred meters of this shop loads of guy ones here so really your job is going to be trying to pick out 
Okay, so here's one. This is an interesting one. Pin Pin Tea. I've never heard of Pin Pin Tea before, but they have their own brand. They have their own packaging. I would suggest that this is probably a tea shop which specializes in a particular type of tea. It looks like they specialize in pours, although it might be uh, aged white teas. So this is the kind of tea shop that may look a bit high end, so it might be a bit too expensive, but um, could be one to check out. Let's go and see. So this shop does specialize in white teas specifically aged white teas which you all know I am a sucker for um, and you can see the prices are pretty high this is a Chaumet and this is a Moudan uh, Moudan cakes are around about 100 pounds or 120 dollars for a cake um, I don't know the quality I haven't tasted it yet but um, they're clearly high-end and they've got quite a markup going on here um, but I'm sure the tea is very very good and it's an example of a tea shop that specializes in one type of tea and this is what I would advise you to go for but we want to try and find something that's a little less high-end a little less branded because that will mean that hopefully we can get a better deal <laughs> So I've just met this gentleman and uh, he's uh, sniffing this yinjen. It's a beautiful yinjen. See. Wow. Incredible. So this uh, yinjen here that I'm trying, I've just found out the price is 3200 3, for a kilo, which is about... 350 pounds, which I guess around 380, nearly 400 dollars a kilo. So pretty expensive stuff, but it is delicious. Look how pale it is, and yet it still has an incredible aroma and flavor. And this is to give you an example of what I was talking about in other videos before about how you can use white tea, aged white tea, after you've brewed it, then put it in a kettle and just boil it and it makes this beautiful orange liquor so this is after many infusions of drinking but it really still produces an incredible flavored liquor um, and it's a perfect example of how the Chinese really make use of their tea they don't let anything go to waste sometimes you put some dried tangerine peel in just for a little bit of extra flavor but it is a delicious delicious um, liquor even after many infusions so cheers just to give you an example of the generosity of the Chinese people I just sitting in this place drinking tea with this gentleman <laughs> with this gentleman here who I've just met and I was tasting tea and he has purchased this packet of tea here and he has kindly given me two of these teas amazing I don't know his name know nothing about him, but he saw that I was enjoying the tea, so he gave me some tea, so... <laughs> Amazing. So that was the first shop we went into, and I spent 45 minutes drinking white tea, which was really, really lovely, and was given a nice gift there, which was quite a surprise, but um, it just goes to show how generous people are when they know that you love tea. But that was the first shop I went into, spent 45 minutes, we're going to have to try to uh, be a bit more efficient. But you know, the whole point of these tea markets is to enjoy yourself. You don't want to rush through things and try to, try to see every single shop. It's better for you to just dip in and have a nice experience in different shops um, instead of desperately trying to see everything. There's a teaware shop here. There's a whole host of shops here you can see. This is just one small section um, off the main street. Um, but I want to try and find if there's a big um, shopping center version, uh, which will hopefully allow me to be a bit more efficient with my time. So let's keep looking. Check out these white tea cakes. They are huge. Just to give you an example of my hand size, look how big they are. That is a big, big tea cake. This place specializes again in tea cakes, looks like white tea, but I'm gonna pass on that one and keep looking around. Ooh, some nice teaware. I'm always tempted to go and grab some teaware whenever I'm here, so I'll definitely be searching for that. And you can see these large shopping centers full of tea, so there's plenty if you get hungry 
some snacks. As predicted, we have a large shopping center style building here, which is gonna be full of tea. So let's see if we can unearth any treasures in here. Okay, so let's just walk around and see what we've got. Now, remember the different types of sellers that I was talking about. The ones that are very enthusiastic, see them standing outside waiting for customers, I would avoid those. You wanna look for the ones that are looking confident in what they do. They don't need to be pushing like this. And you can see that they're selling lots of different types of tea here. This is looking a bit better, more specialist, slightly smaller. But the best thing to do is just walk around, have a little scope, don't go into any shop, have a feel. Hello, hello. You can see what I mean. They're always gonna be trying to get you in. Um, avoid them politely. Um, just walk, keep on walking by, get a feel for the, for the shopping center, get a, get a feel for the types of shops. Um, usually, bottom floor, lower floor, tends to be the tea sellers that are desperate to get trade and sell lots of different types of tea. I tend to uh, avoid the bottom floor as much as possible and head up to the next floor. You can see it's aisle upon aisle upon aisle of tea. You could literally spend a whole week here tasting and not even touch 10% of it. But we're gonna just follow our instincts a little bit. You see the people that are basically bored on their phones. I would avoid those as well. There are just some tea sellers that just exude a certain kind of satisfaction and confidence in their wares. They'll give you a nice smile, um, but they're not gonna try and pull you in because they are gonna be able to sell all their tea. They know that already. And uh, they just have a certain confidence. I guess it's the same as most retail shops. Some beautiful Yixin clay pots in this place. I have my eye on one, but it's gonna be expensive. So I'm not sure if I wanna spend that money. Some nice cast iron pots for boiling water to get good minerality in your tea. Here's an example of a shop. You can see they've just taken that bit of extra effort, a bit of extra um, care in their products and it's presented very differently to this kind of shop where there's loads. Now that's not necessary to say that this is poor quality or, or lower quality. It's just in terms of your day, in terms of the amount of time that you're gonna spend in these shops, it's better to hit the shops that have uh, a more discerning selection. So I've stopped into this stall that specialize in Bailiang Cha, Bailiang Cha, which is a, a post-fermented tea from Hunan province. And this is an example. They only do Baliang Cha, so that's why I'm in here. They have some poor teas, of course, but that's uh, pretty standard for all the tea sellers. But look at their big logs of tea here. This gives me confidence, so I'm gonna try their tea. So this is a great little find. They're giving me lots of taste testing here, which is always good. Children drinking tea. Everybody drinking tea. <laughs> So we're enjoying the black tea from Hunan province. And I have my eye on one. This place that I came into, they're very kindly offering me some Yiwu Pua Sheng Cha. So some raw Pua from Yiwu Gushu, about 200 years uh, old tea trees. And from 2007, so nine years old. So the high-end stuff. So we have two Yiwu Puas. One of them is from 2007, and the other is from 2003. And she's not telling me which one's which. I have to guess. I like these games, as you know. So that one's Yiwu 2003, but from younger tea trees. This is Yiwu 2007, but from older tea trees. And as always, the age of the tea tree is what comes out on top. Okay, guys, so I'm a little bit tea drunk. I've been drinking a lot of the Yiwu Pua, um, which was delicious, amazing Pua tea, but it was 5,000 RMB a cake. 
um, which works out to be about, I don't know, $700 or so, 550 pounds, $700 for a cake. So very, very expensive. Um, and for my, to my taste, anyway, it was not worth that money. It was very good tea, but not worth that money. Um, but they specialized in uh, HR, in black tea from Hunan province. So that's what I picked up. Um, and uh, that's a really, really nice tea. So it goes to show again, pick specialized shops and buy the tea that they specialize in because you're going to get a better price for it and it's going to be better quality. So um, I've got about another hour here. I'm going to keep nosing around. I'm like a kid in a candy store. There's so much here to taste. You can see around me that it's just shop after shop after shop. You can literally spend days and days here. And uh, I've got one more hour. I might go and look for some teaware. As if by magic, the second floor of this shopping center is pretty much teaware. Teaware and poor cakes. What more could a man ask for? All right, let's go and see if we can find some nice bits and pieces. Some Gongdao bays here. I know all of you tea heads out there could spend quite a lot of money in a place like this. Anything catch your eye? Some cute little tea sets here. I don't know particularly what I'm looking for, but if I see something that looks different, then I'll certainly point it out for you. Love the look of this Yixing pot. Price is about right for something that's properly handmade. It's about 320, 330 pounds, about $380, something like that for this pot. Beautiful. Okay, so we've left the shopping center. We're back on the streets. I've been looking around. I've tasted tea at about three or uh, four different places, but it's been four hours now. So you can see how quickly time goes by. Um, and there reaches a point where you just kind of glaze over. You're too tea drunk and you've seen too much tea that you can't make any coherent decisions anymore. There was a lot of nice tea wear there, but uh, nothing that really stood out. And uh, as I say, I'm feeling a bit tea high, and at that point you kind of need to head home because otherwise you're gonna make some bad buying decisions. Believe me, I've made those before. So I'm gonna head back and I'll see you back at the hotel. All right, I'm back at the hotel and I need to prepare for my very important meeting. That's the whole point of me being here. But some takeaway points from Malian Dao Market. It is a huge market, not quite as huge as Guangzhou Tea Market, but still very big. You will never be able to cover all the tea sellers, even if you spent weeks here. So don't get frustrated about that. Instead, enjoy the experience. Let the fates take you by the hand and just browse around and just follow your instincts and you will find good tea. The points I made before hold true. Find sellers that specialize in particular types of tea, they're more likely to be associated with farms, which means you're more likely to get good tea at a good price. And then after that, it's just about relationships. In my experience, good people sell good tea. So when you kind of walk into a shop, don't commit to sitting down too quickly. Instead, ask some questions, see if you can feel out the kind of personality of the seller, if they know what they're talking about, and if they're enthusiastic about their tea, and then if you feel good about that person, sit down and taste their tea. In terms of pricing, you're not gonna haggle down these prices too much. Uh, usually if you sit there and drink the tea and you compliment the tea and you are generous with your compliments, if you really like the tea, don't say yes too quickly in terms of uh, buying. Just sit, drink, you know, consider it, you know, look, look around as if you're thinking about the price and they will usually kind of pull out a calculator and give you a slightly cheaper price. But you're not gonna get 50% off um, prices here. This is not that kind of market. Okay, so do you remember these? This was the white tea that I was very, very kindly and out of the blue given by a complete and utter stranger in one of the tea shops that we visited. The, this is a Shomei, this is a three year old Shomei and it's coming from a really high quality seller. In fact, one of the best tea shops that I tasted out there in Maliandao. And in the spirit of giving, what I would like to do is give this forward to one of you. So I have two packs here, but I'm gonna give it to one um, viewer. And you, 
Whoever wins needs to promise that you're gonna give one of these packs to a friend. So you can keep one for yourself and you need to promise me that you're gonna give one of these to your friend. And what I would like you to do is first of all, subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. And secondly, write in the comment section below why you want to give this tea to your friend. Maybe they particularly deserve it for something good that they've done for you. Maybe they are a tea head or maybe you think that they could be a tea head. So just give me the reason in the comment section below and then we'll pick a winner out at random and this show mate will be winging its way over to you. I hope that this has given you some insight into how to navigate through one of the tea markets in China. If you have any questions about it, then please let me know. But that's it, tea heads. If you made it to the end of this video, then please give the video the thumbs up. Check out our YouTube playlist and let us know if there are any videos that you would like us to make. If you're ever in London, then come visit us in Camden to say hi and taste our wares. If you have any questions or comments, then please fire them over. Other than that, I'm Don Ray from Mayleaf. Thank you for being a part of the revelation of true tea. Stay away from the tea bags. Keep drinking the good stuff and spread the word because nobody deserves bad tea. Bye.